Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Today I'm going to be speaking on the subject, death is not the end. I repeat, death is not the end. Death is something that is common to all mankind. The strong die, the weak die. The rich die, the poor die. Male die, female die. The educated die, the uneducated die. The sick die, the well die. The old die, and the young die. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what part of the world you are from. There is no escape for death. However, the word of the Lord is coming to tell us today that death is not the end. Hallelujah. Our soul will live on and live on for all eternity. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 19 asks to, to, to tell us this. If it was in this life only, we have hope in Christ. We of all men would have been most miserable. But thank God we have a glorious hope today. Hallelujah. And the hope that we have is that Jesus will return and the dead in Christ will rise. Come on. Hallelujah. Sad to say, many people in the world today believe that when someone dies, it is the end of that person. However, that is not what the Bible says. The word of God makes it absolutely clear that death is not the end. There is certainly a life after death for every human being. Hebrews 9 verse 27 tells us clearly, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. There are numerous appointments that we can miss, but the one with death no one can miss that. For after death is the judgment. No one will escape the judgment of God after we die. And 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 10 confirms this by saying, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he had done, whether it be good or bad. Sad to say, we live in a world today that we see a lot of injustice. But on the great judgment day, there will be no injustice. God will judge every human being fairly and justly. Whatever we do in this life will determine where we stand on the judgment day. No one will be able to buy God out. No one will fool God. No one will con God. Because he will judge us. Freely and justly. According to our works. In this world. Revelation chapter 20 verse 12 says. And I saw the dead. Small and great. Stand before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened. Which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. You may be saying, Pastor, what will happen to me if Jesus returns to earth before I die? If you are alive when Jesus should put in his second appearance, the word of the Lord tells us in Revelation 22 verse 12, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. While we have a chance, while we are alive, while we are in our rightful minds, we must prepare well for the judgment day. Solomon the wisest man who ever lived advises us in Ecclesiastes 12 verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandment for this is the whole duty of man. 
For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing. Whether it be good or whether it be evil. Many people today are living life on the fast lane. But we need to stop a while. We need to think very seriously about this. The most important question that every one of us should ask ourselves individually is where will I spend eternity? If I should die today or if Jesus Christ should put in his second appearance today, where will I spend eternity? The numerous things that we can think about, we can occupy our minds with, but that is the most important question for us to consider. We find that things are happening very fast in our world today. We don't know who will be the next to go. And while we have a chance, we need to make our calling and election sure. Hallelujah. On the judgment day, there will be two destinations. And only one we can end up. It's either going to be heaven or hell. These destinations are not temporary destinations, but eternal destinations. That is why we need to take salvation very seriously. Jesus said in his word in Luke chapter 16 verse 22 that there was a certain rich man and he died and he lifted up his eyes in, he in hell being in torment and he cried out and he said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am in, tor I'm in, to I'm in torment in this flame. And we find that Abraham replied and said to him, you had so many wonderful things in this life. But now you're in torment. And if I even wanted to send Lazarus, I cannot. I don't have any authority to do it. Because what you don't realize, rich man, is that where you are and where Lazarus is, there is a gulf fixed between us. So I can't come where you are and you can't come where we are. There is a gulf fixed so where you are, that's where you have to stay for all eternity. It's a serious issue we are talking about here today. Wherever we end up, that's where we're going to stay. We are sure today that we need to get it right because God does not wish that any of us should perish but that all should come to repentance we find that John 3 16 tells us clearly that for God served the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved today in this service today because we know that death is not the end for our sister Lavina. We are not mourning as the world who don't have no hope because we have a glorious hope. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. We have a glorious hope. Hallelujah. I have no doubts at all in my mind and in my spirit that she has gone to be with Christ in glory. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. First Thessalonians 4 verse 13 says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you should sorrow even as them which are asleep, which, which, them who are in, in the, that have no hope. You should not sorrow even as others which don't have any hope. For if we believe that Jesus Christ, Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him for the Lord himself. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. It's not going to be the Apostle John. It's not going to be the Apostle Paul. But the Lord himself. Come on. Hallelujah. He is going to return again. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel. Hallelujah. And we find that the trump of the Lord shall sound.
and the dead in Christ shall rise again. Oh, hallelujah, they shall rise up first. And they which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord. Hallelujah, in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Somebody give God praise in the house for that glorious hope. Hallelujah. Because the word of God tells us we must comfort ourselves with these positive words of assurance. These words of confidence. Comfort yourself today, my brother. Comfort yourself today, my sister. Our sister has gone to be with the Lord in glory. Hallelujah. And she is in a better place. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me, say the Lord Jesus. In my father's house are many mansions. If it was not so, I would have told you. But I go to prepare a place for you. And I'm going to come again and I will receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Hallelujah. I came to tell somebody today that heaven is a place of indescribable splendor and magnificence. And the word of God assures us that in heaven, Revelation 12 verse 4 tells us that God shall wipe away all tears from our eyes. Hallelujah. And there shall be no more death there. Come on. There's going to be no more sorrow. Hallelujah. There's going to be no more crying there. And neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things will be passed away. Somebody ought to give God praise for this blessed assurance today. Because we have a glorious hope. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Somebody may say today. Pastor. You believe all this thing about heaven? Yes, I am convinced. The city is a city of pure gold. The city is a city with the streets of gold. The walls are of jasper and the gates are pearly gates. Come on. I came to tell somebody to them man, that the awesomeness, the awesomeness of heaven is indescribable. Now, let me tell you something. You may say, well, this is written some 2,000 years ago. Bring me up to date. I can tell you something. I went to see my father, Reverend Kingsley Mead, just before he passed away. And he was telling me something about the splendor of what heaven is all about. He told me that he made it into the Polygate City. And he held my hand and he said, Eugene... How some people are so stupid to say that there is no hell and there is no heaven. There is definitely a heaven because I made it. Come on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I made it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And he said, my, 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 I've, re I've, I've read a lot of things about heaven. I've heard many things spoken about that glorious city. But he began to tell me, I cannot even explain. I even express even half of it. Because the half of it has never ever been told before. It's more magnificent even than what the book says. I came to tell somebody today. That if you are serving God, keep on serving God. Because we have a wonderful and glorious hope. Hallelujah. We have a wonderful city prepared for us. Hell was not prepared for us. It was prepared for the devil and his angels. It's time for us, if we are not saved, to get saved today. Prepare yourself for heaven. God do not want us to die and go to hell. Imagine, many of us could say we have experienced so much things in this world. Bereavement, sickness, troubles, all sorts of pain, all sorts of problems. And you're going to tell me that there is a glorious hope. There is a wonderful city awaiting us. And we should die after what we have been through in this world. And go to a Christless hell. It really does not make sense to me. So we need to prepare today. We need to make our calling and our election sure. The word of the Lord tells us clearly. 
Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. Hallelujah. For to, for to me, for me to live is Christ and to die it is gain. And to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Somebody give God praise in the house because we have a blessed assurance. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, death, where's your sting? Oh, grave, where's your victory? When you're a child of God, you need not be afraid of death because you're only getting promoted into the heaven, into eternity with the Lord. Hallelujah. The only way to ensure that we get to heaven is to accept Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior and to serve him faithfully, like Sister Love, like Pastor Kingsley Maid, and so many others have done. Hold on to him until the end. For only he that endure to the end shall be saved. Salvation is not something to play with or to put off because we do not know when is going to be our last. One man said at one point, let me come to Christ at a more convenient season. But the Bible never said that the convenient season never came. I came to tell somebody today, today is that convenient season and that convenient time. You don't know about any more time. You don't know what is coming up after now. Meanwhile, you have a chance. Today's a good day to make your calling an election show. Hallelujah. Praising him for Lord. Some people are saying you don't have to come to Jesus to be saved. There are many other ways. But the Lord is still saying that I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man cometh unto the Father. But by me. Amen. Some people may say I'm a good person. Morally good. I don't, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a law abiding person. I'm respectful. I'm kind. I'm giving. I, I'm, a, I'm a very nice person in society. But it still will not be a ticket to get you into heaven. For it's by grace we are saved, not of works. How shall we escape hellfire? How shall we escape God's judgment and wrath on the judgment day if we neglect so great salvation? Salvation is a great, 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 great thing. The greatest thing to achieve in this world is to have salvation. And to hold on to it to the end. You will not regret it. Bow your heads with me today. Thank you for joining us. And thank you for listening to this timely and powerful message. You have heard the word. And now we would like to extend this opportunity to you. To accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you wish to do this. Please just say this short prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that I am a sinner and I thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Please forgive me of all of my sins and cleanse me from all my unrighteousness. Save me and fill me with your Holy Spirit. I thank you for answering my prayer and I thank you for saving me. Amen. And if you have said that prayer, congratulations and welcome into the family of Christ. If you would like to contact us or even visit us, the information that you need will be on your screen in a few seconds. Until next time, goodbye. God richly bless you.